everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Before I bring on the legendary flying douchebag, I want you to know that I want you to like this interview with the like button, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Now, without further ado, I've got the flying Dutchman, Adrian Vandenberg. How you doing, Adrian? I'm doing great, man. I, I think flying douchebag was too much comp uh, compl uh, too much of a compliment, you know. Just like st stick to flying Dutchman, the uh, douchebag. Douchebag. Um, uh, I'm not worthy for a title like that. <laughs> and you said you wanted to say something to the viewers. Yeah, I think that all, all us bastards should should, be, should subscribe to the channel. That's what I think, you know. But um, <laughs> I'm Dutch. What the fuck do I know? You know. Awesome, man. I love. I love it. I love it. I love it. So uh, <laughs> before I get into too much about the new album, I cannot forget to compliment Bob Marlette in this. What a job oh, he did producing this this album. Just brilliant. I think it's even better than the 2021. I like this album almost. One, I think it's in my top of all of the Vandenberg albums, but this one was produced so much. And tell the viewers how much of a difference a good producing can make for an album success. Well, it does, you know, the, um, it, it's the same as live shows. If you don't have a good uh, sound, sound man in, in the, in the um, you know, in the hall or in a venue, um, there's a lot of people who go, oh man, that band sucks. You know, if the, if the sound isn't right, if, if, if the sound doesn't translate what um, the band or the artist or whatever is doing in a proper way, then, um, then it doesn't get across. It's like somebody talking with a, with the most piece on, you know, like Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Hello, Clary. <laughs> but um, <laughs> that, that's how it is. And Bob did a great job um, after the 2020 album. Um, I wanted to go a little bit uh, in the words of Nigel Tufnell, you know, go to 11 instead of to 10. Yeah. yeah uh, from the Spinal Tap. Everybody knows that guy. Yeah. And um, so I talked to Bob. I said, man, you know, I think it would be cool to crank it up because especially... Everybody who's been in the business as long as I have usually start mellowing out. You know, they, they go, okay, I'm relaxed now. You know, I've been in this business for such a long time. I'm gonna make acoustic music from now on and call my call my grandma if she can play some some uh, some mouth harp on it and all all that crap. You know, so I'm the other way. I wanna. Yeah. I, I thought, man, I'm gonna go to 11 on this one instead of 10 and. Uh, and Bob was all up for it. You know, I said, let's make the the drum sound a little bigger. Let's. Make, I'm gonna put some more oomph on the on the guitar sound and and singer much you, as you can tell you know he he, he goes to eleven and yeah um, he really digs into the song and into the emotion of the song and uh, all the things put together yeah I'm really really happy with it yeah and speaking of how you um you don't mentally age with the body like your humor is second to none and I remember <laughs> watching you I'm trying to see if I can share my screen here um where in the hell is it um do you remember this uh they i might have to edit this can you see it it's a, no, no it's a lot of a small thumbnail so i can't really tell what it is but then um, yeah well it was um here we go uh, yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah so when cool. clary spoke <laughs> to the village all the town uh folks suddenly lost their uh <laughs> their headaches yeah <laughs> oh yeah so let's see if i can figure this one out here um i'll have to edit this out because i'm uh, a little interesting on this give me a second adrian um don't want to lose fuck thank god all right <laughs> so where is this going share screen no nope, don't want to leave the meeting <laughs> yeah, you know, I got to I'm wrestling with this stuff too. Sometimes I'm already happy when I've got it connected. Yeah, like where? Are we, oh, stop share. Woo! Yeah, we're we're back. Ew. So, so what? What's your background? It looks really cool. It's uh, well, those monster, my, the, I got the my monsters, parents, but my parents are here for this interview. <laughs> Very nice. Well, tell them I said hi. That's uh, you don't little, know who um, that is. The little, yeah, the monsters. Herman yeah, Monster yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah. Yeah. I try to use Another different guy. ones and uh, make it a little bit more unique, so people don't have to look at my ugly mug. Let's look around. <laughs> well, you look a lot. You look a lot, a lot better than Herman does. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> a compliment. Thank you. I, I don't. Know, I, you know, you... I don't have a bolt <laughs> in my neck anymore. 
<laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's a matter of it, it, it depends on what you eat for dinner, I suppose. You know, usually. Yes, for sure. So speaking of the new album, Sin, awesome. Um, I hope you like the little uh, preview I put together for you. I thought it was just a good way of um, just getting people that are kind of thinking, okay, what's uh, Adrian been doing? And then get a little bit of a taste of each of the song. Cool. Yeah, very cool. You have a very, very great talent for writing ballads, in my opinion. Uh, Thanks, man. Thanks. Baby, it's... baby, you've changed. That was that's probably one of my favorites on the whole tune, especially the Matt's great singing. Yeah, Matt said that's a great job. He, he he's he's a really soulful singer, so to speak. He's not like your typical uh, LA style of singing, you know, um, like the way Stephen Piercy and uh, Vince Neil sing and stuff. Uh, Matt is definitely more blues based, just like Coverdale and and Paul Rogers and those kind of guys, you know. So. It makes a big difference, I think, uh, in, yeah, of course. I mean, in ballads, when you really have to pour your heart out, if you mm -hmm. don't, a ballad is useless, you know? Yeah. Um, speaking of your band, Cohen and uh, Randy, I mean, Randy keeps it together at the beat and the bass, yeah. but Cohen, what a, what a beast. What a beast. I saw he, him do a drum solo. I think it was the Monsters of Rock Cruise. He came in and did a drum solo. It was just, it was, I couldn't yeah. believe it. Yeah, he's, he's really, really, really great. And there's a reason why he's been voted... Uh, best rock drummer in the Benelux, which is Belgium, Holland, and Luxembourg, already for 12 years in a row, you know, and he's a, he's the greatest guy. And it, the combination is amazing, you know, great musician is one thing, but a great person um, is, is actually more important, in my opinion, but he's got it all, you know, he's a fantastic drummer, so powerful, and his timing, you can basically uh, syn synchronize a, Roland, uh, a Rolex watch on, uh, on his timing, you know, he's there, yeah. bam, which really great. And Randy, are those extensions or is that his fucking hair? That's wild. It's his fucking hair. It's 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 ridiculous. It's like uh, you would think. I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. I thought initially that there was extensions as well. And the goofy thing is, Mats has got like a similar kind of hair. They both have this this dark brown, huge curly bush on top of the head. You go, holy shit, man! They look like like exploded Afro. Afro it's like dudes, a, it's but, like a um, chia pet on steroids. Yeah. That that stuff. So, yeah, it's it's um it's pretty amazing, and he's a great player, great guy. And I'm really lucky with um with this band, with the lineup, and with Mats as well. Looking at Mats and when he sings, it's almost like how can he get out that much power? Like he's not a big yeah. guy. Absolutely, you know. And uh, last year we played on a huge festival in north northern France, and it was really really hot. You know, it was extremely hot. It was around 40 degrees Celsius. I don't know how much it is in Fahrenheit, but it's, you could basically uh, fry an egg on the pavement. And um, I didn't actually, but I could have. Yeah. But it was so hot on stage. We played the end of the afternoon and the sun was shining. It was lower, getting lower, of course. You know, it was straight low, on the, straight in our faces. And we were almost dropping, you know, and, and Kuhn, our drummer, he, he had it, you know, he, he told me later, I, I was afraid it was going to slide of my seat because, you know, yeah, the sweat. He, he, couldn't, he couldn't, but Mats kept delivering, you know, I was amazed at that, man, he didn't miss a note, he didn't miss miss like a, a high scream or squeal or whatever, you know, it's pretty amazing. Well, I think 40, I think the way we do it here, because we're in Canada, right on the border of our American friends, so uh, they're in Fahrenheit, we're in Celsius. So I think the thing is you add, you double it and add 32. So 40 plus 40 is 80 and you add 32. So it's 112 Fahrenheit, I think. That's wild. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty wild. It sounds pretty hot. <laughs> it's pretty it caliente. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So you guys are, uh, you've, you've done some sold out shows, top in the charts in Holland and, and um, in that area. I'm pretty sure you guys are raising in the charts here in North America. I just haven't checked. You're doing, it shows you have three U.S. dates in February. Is Has that been added on to, or are they? In oh, the yeah, yeah. It, yeah, and there's actually 26 dates. Holy um, shit. Yeah, the problem is that apparently I have a manager because I I, I got um, quite a question about it, of course. Um, the thing is that um, when a venue is connected to something called i think it's song kick or something yeah if they're connected to it then it automatically appears on those kind of websites so um my manager's looking into it now to 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 make sure that it's um 
on the website we get all the dates because people want to want to get their tickets and stuff you know so yeah it's 26 uh, shows we start headlining for about a week week and a half and then we do a co-headlining tour with jeff tate wow uh, we sick. start we start around the chicago area and then we fortunately we go we go down to the southern states as soon as we can mm -hmm. because in, in chicago around uh, january february that's um <clears throat> That's that can be very snowy, snowy and very cold, but windy. um, yeah, yeah, and windy, you know, so yeah, the windy city, of course, but um, yeah, uh, we're going, I think, about four after about four or five shows, we're getting to the southern states, and it's going to be well, let's see what we get of you know, what kind of tornadoes we're going to get uh, over there, because yeah, yeah, there's always something okay. going. Um, make sure yeah. you get, get your manager, um, well, I've been talking to him, but. If you get into Michigan, because you're going to be closer in Illinois, there's a place called the Machine Shop. I'm sure they would host you. And then Kuwait and Casino. Keep that on your radar. Kuwait and Casino, which is on the border of my city in Sioux, Ontario and Sioux, Michigan. It's like a five minute drive across the bridge. You'd sell right. that place out. So I'm going to let him know as well to contact them. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. And um, if they get in contact with uh, my management, our, our booking agency, um is uh what is it called uh, something brian. Brand, um I've, I've spoken with him brian uh, coleman oh it could be yeah yeah then yeah well that, that if they will know those venues i suppose so maybe we're yeah. maybe they're even busy setting it up i hope so yeah because well, man the closer to canada I, I i've only toured canada with white snake of course well actually also with vandenberg in the very early days when we yeah. supported um aussie and with White Snake, um, we played Canada, and Kiss was supporting us. Man, you can uh, the the egos of Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons. Gene Canada Simmons, was not Paul Stanley have egos? No, they're humble as pie. Uh, no, well, Canada, the the size of Canada and some and some. Yeah, so they did. Yeah. They didn't like it at, at all. They were programmed as uh, well support. You know, I mean, you can't really, but they didn't like it that they were um, programmed. You know, as special guest support or whatever. So um, they started screaming and shouting against the crowd. And they said, man, man, those guys from White Snake, they don't want us to use our inflatable, our, our props, they call it, but it was an inflatable sphinx. Yeah, inflatable. Rubber balloon. Why not inflate anything? But uh, there was no space on the stage. We couldn't help it. I don't care, you know. They can inflate the grandma. I don't care, you know. But um, they couldn't fit the, uh, the sphinx on stage. So it was not them. Um, they weren't happy campers, so to speak. Uh -huh. Poor guys. And I mean, they're struggling for money right now, too. Eh? We should do a GoFundMe for Kiss. I think so. Yeah, they're they're running out of uh, money, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it would be a good cause. A GoFundMe. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure Gene Siemens would, would find a way to make it work, too. You know, the guy. Oh, who's that? Gene Simmons. Oh, Gene Simmons. I said JC. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Gene Simmons would try to get a GoFundMe if he could. <laughs> Jesus, hey, I'm sure he would. Some people just like money. What's wrong with that? I guess, eh? Um, so um, what do you have for shows coming up um in the next little while in, in Europe? Um we got a, a week of Dutch shows in November, and um our booking agency is trying to connect um a couple of Scandinavian shows, Germany, uh, Switzerland, Austria, and then um by then it will be December. And then we're going to start in February in the United States. And we have February, March. Then we have a bunch of um, shows in the UK, as far as I know. It's going to be a very busy year. There's a couple of festivals, a bunch of festivals. Mm -hmm. And Japan, of course, before the summer. So, yeah, I'm going to be um, one busy Dutch guy. <laughs> one one busy Dutch bastard. That's basically what I'm going to be. <laughs> bastard, yeah. I might be <laughs> in there. We're talking. <laughs> Um, speaking of uh, Matt, when I was listening to the album, I have to admit, um, there is a more than striking similarity between David and Matt's voice. Was that something you were looking for? Because there's there's no denying it. If you if you didn't know any better, I'm going to be honest. A couple of the tracks, I I thought, okay, this this would pass for David Coverdale. I was going to say, uh, you know, headline, um, Vandenberg hires Coverdale. <laughs> yeah he's got a of course you know it's um his generation he is um in his 50s um 
any singer that's blues based gets influenced by guys like Coverdale and Robert Plant, Paul Rogers. Those kind of singers are my favorite singers. And and I love to work with those kind of like the the singer I used uh, I I didn't use him uh, I worked with in the Moon Kings my former band mm-hmm. Jan a good yeah. friend of mine yep he he also you know he's one of those singers I, I like those big fat brown blues based voices and and much is one of them you know he's um it 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 was definitely not a um, a conscious effort because I just at the, when I was looking for a singer because it wor- didn't work out with Ronnie Romero, mm-hmm. um, I suddenly remembered much working with Ingrid Malmsteiner, and it was like a totally different repertoire. So it, if you check it on YouTube, it, it didn't even remember me, uh, remind me of Coverdale. But the thing is, the kind of music that I write on this album and on on the Vandenberg albums, uh, David uh, Coverdale always told me, you know. There's a bunch of songs on the first two Vandenberg albums that could have been Whitesnake songs because I've always written in that, in that kind of vein because Whitesnake was one of my favorite bands, but also bands like Rainbow, The Purple, Bad Company, Cream, all those blues-based bands, you know, and sometimes with a little bit of a classical touch. So yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, that, that's it, it. It it ends up that way, and and, and you know, if, if if you write like that, like I do. Um, a lot of people um, said that um, the song Sin reminds me of uh, them of Judgment Day. Yeah, of course it does. You know, it's, I, I wrote Judgment Day with, with, with David. Mm-hmm. And um, this is one of those kind of songs, you know, like a big epic song with, uh, with cellos in it and all that, all that stuff that make, that make it cinematographic almost. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you, you can hardly accuse ACDC of... Um, uh, one of their songs sound like another one of their songs because they all sound like uh, their songs you know like a, when you have a style as a band yeah a favorite kind of so you're bound to find similarities with songs that um, you wrote before well that's what attracts people to the music is because they have a sound and it's yeah it's not a cookie cutter sound there's you write ballads you write faster songs you write slower songs on this album um uh, walking on water, burning skies, um, uh, baby of change, sin. I mean, they're all they're all great tunes. So speaking of that, for the tour, what um, kind of um, set list are you going to have? You're going to have a four or five White Snake tunes, a couple early Vandenberg tunes you love is in vain, um, burning heart, and then five or six of the new stuff because you know the fans going out. They're going to be fans of Adrian's for the last decades, so they're going to definitely want to hear some of your older stuff. So how how do you proceed with that? Yeah, it's it's on one hand it's a it's a luxury situation because there's a lot of uh, great songs to choose from. Um, initially, um, I think the way it looks now uh, on uh, by popular demand, we're going to be quite he- white snake heavy in the first run. Uh, because there's a lot of people asking for it. Uh, you know, wh- my wife's neck years was uh, uh, from 19, end of 1986 all the way to 1999. Mm-hmm. That was almost 13 years. Um, so there's going to be quite a number of, of white snake songs. And of course, uh, like you said, you know, like definitely um, Burning Heart, old Vandenberg songs, You Love Is In Vain, Wait Till The Shit Is The Fan, uh, those kind of songs. And then, of course, a, a bunch of new ones, depending on also... I'm, I'm going to keep in mind how well the album does in the United States because it's just out. It's only out since last week. Mm-hmm. And as we all know, it's going to take a while before it kind of sinks in, you know, because when it gets distributed everywhere and when it starts rolling on, on, on Spotify and all those platforms, mm-hmm. then it's actually what I was planning to do to, to take a look which songs are streamed much uh, the yeah. most. Um, which pretty clear, usually the first couple of singles, which are uh, House of Fire and um, Sin. And now uh, in Europe, um, the single, the new single is Light It Up. Yeah. Um, that would be a, a great live track anyway. So that's definitely yeah. going to be in the set. And of course, a bunch of White Nick songs like Still of the Night, Here We Go Again, um, Fool Sailing for Your Loving, Sailing Ships. Yeah, we already do that one. So. Yeah, that's going to be cool. I'm really happy I got to do the same shit. I, I, I already did it with um, Vandenberg's Moon King. 
Yeah. Uh, singer Jan did a great job on it. You know, we played England and a couple of people were saying, I closed my eyes and I thought it was David singing. So mm-hmm. that's really great because those are not easy songs to sing. You know, it's not like you can put any singer on that because you don't want it to sound poppy. It really needs like a masculine guy, you know, who, who really sings it like a guy and not, not like a squeaking, squealing pig, you know, it needs, <laughs> it needs to have that. It needs to have a bluesy vibe, otherwise it doesn't yeah. make any sense. I, I love another song. Well, actually, I got to tell you um, two things. Um, the song you wrote for, um, is it FC20, the soccer? Yeah, FC20, yeah. I love that song. I love that solo you did. I love the energy, and there's three or four videos on YouTube that you did. That was amazing, I got to tell you. Thanks, man. Um, I don't know if you've ever played that live, but maybe you played it live um in the Netherlands, because everybody knows of FC20. Yeah, they're popular, and they're from my hometown. Yeah. So, yeah, that was, that was fun. That's actually how I started my band Moon Kings, because um, I needed a singer to sing that song, and I had two American guys um, that I thought of. I thought, oh, he, he'll do a great job. And then I thought, well, um, it, it will get complicated if I get, like, an American guy, and then I have to fly back and forth again, yeah. you know, like in the White Snake days. So I started looking around in Holland, but was I was totally out of touch with uh, whatever was going on in Holland, and I've never really been blown away by um, by that many Dutch singers mm-hmm. um, because I got pretty spoiled, you know, working with Coverdale, working with John Waite, Paul Rogers. Mm-hmm. I worked with all those guys, so you, you get spoiled. And um, yeah. so, and then I, I ran into Jan. We became instant friends, and he did an amazing job. And, I, and then I thought, holy cow, you know, the guy. It's great. I'd be stupid if I don't start a band with him as a vocalist, and I did. That's why I started Moon Kings at, um, about seven years ago. Yeah. And we we did three albums. We did great. But um, the reason why I I put it in in, in the fridge, so to speak, is um, uh, because Jan couldn't tour outside of Holland because he's got this huge farming company, mm-hmm. and um, he has to keep an eye on it. So yeah. if he's out of Holland for one day, he's on his on his on his um, uh, laptop all the time to see if everything works okay, and then uh, so yeah, I started really started missing touring internationally, yeah. which is what I'm doing now. So I thought you know I'll put it in the fridge and maybe at some point I can take it out of there and do a tour again because maybe at some time, at some point Jan has had enough of um, of his farming. You know he's crop dusting. You never know. Yeah. No, I said crop dusting, but I'm sure he's. Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, um, yeah that's it. Yeah. <laughs> another song I like, and it's one of my favorite solos, is "How Long." Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's one of my favorite solos too. It's um, it's short but sweet, so to speak. And it it um, as as people can tell in most of the cases, I like to tell to tell a little story in in a story uh, with my yeah. solos. I never take it as a platform to start uh, wheelie wheeling away into space. Um, take it as an opportunity to show what you can do. You know, for me, it's really telling a little story within 20 seconds. That's basically uh, my challenge every time. Yeah. And uh, I think I've only recorded one solo uh, on a song called "This Is War" on the second or the third Vandenberg album. I think the second one. Yeah, and um, that one is longer, and that's probably my longer solo I've ever done on a record. But it's usually within 20 seconds, and I think as a guitar player, you should be able to tell tell enough of a story in, in yeah. 18, 19, 20 seconds, and that's what I want to do. It's almost like a recap of the song in instrumental only. Yeah. yeah. Who knows, you know? Uh, sometimes I thought about maybe re-recording a couple of those early Vandenberg songs just to... Um, to see how I would do them now, because at the, at the time I didn't have the experience that I have now. Um, I heard in my head how, how I would like to to translate it to to, to the recording, but um, in those days I didn't really get there, you know. And right now, there's a couple of those songs like "Waiting for the Night" from the second album, and "This Is War," mm-hmm. um, "Voodoo" from the third album. A couple of albums where I'm still really happy with them, um, with the song and the solos. That I think, hmm, maybe I should make like a 
album with just re-recordings of early, earlier stuff, or maybe one or two White Snake songs from a Slip of the Tongue album when I couldn't play, you know, at the mm. time. So, yeah. and then it will ver- get very close to how this new Sin album sounds, because that's how I had it in my in my head yeah. with Slip of the Tongue. Yeah. Um, I don't want to forget to thank Steve uh, for helping set this up. Um, Steve is great. Yeah. Lauren. Um, yeah. Even Johan, guys, <laughs> I had to get a hold of him. Oh, so yeah, one. Yeah, they're all really busy because because there's uh, all the interviews have done about ninety by now, and they all come through different channels. Like in the evening, of course, because of the the time changes. Um, yeah. Or the, the time, I, I do the the American ones, and during the day I do the Japanese ones, European ones, Canadian um, ones. You, today. Yes, exactly. Canada, man. Um, Brian Adams, Canadian. My, yes. One of my favorite song, songwriters of all time. We Guys talked about brilliant. that during one interview. You took her, your daughter to the show. Yeah, exactly. Well, remember, it, in, it was in Eindhoven about probably about four years ago, three or four years. And it was it was great because um, the whole crowd um, sang like 60% of the songs with him. He when I interviewed, such great him, songs. I interviewed him, I told him that. You said that, and he goes, "Cheers, Adrian." <laughs> oh, great! That's great yeah. to hear, because yeah. we we spent some time together. Um, uh, the I think it was the last White Snake tour I did in '97. We played Portugal, and um, we we were in the same hotel, a little boutique hotel uh, on the coast of Portugal. Beautiful, um, and they were just finishing their European um, tour, and we were just starting. And so we we spent a couple of days in the same hotel, and. Um, I got a chance to talk to him and to, uh, to his guitar player and all great guys and uh, some of the guys brought their families. So I was actually looking forward to to uh, have a little chat with Brian again when he played Holland, but it was so chaotic backstage. There were all these press people and stuff that he basically jumped into his limo and took off. So yeah. it was a bit of a pity, but um, yeah, mm-hmm. great, great talk. You know, I became a fan of his ever since his um, uh, Cuts Like a Knife album, actually. Right. So, and, um, um, yes, Summer of 60, 69 is a really popular song in Europe. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've rarely been in a party where at some point Summer of 69 doesn't come up and everybody jumps on the table, you know? Yeah. Really cool. And, yeah. And then, and then Still of the Night, right? The next song. Still of the Night. That's another one. There's yeah. so many. That's when, that's, when people, uh, that's when women start throwing up their clothes, you know? I don't know why. And of course, you know, I think it's I, I the uh, sub, I think it's the subliminal stuff that David put in when he was producing it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. He was quite a horny bastard in those days. <laughs> hey, so have you been on uh, Eddie Trunk uh, promoting this album yet? Not on this album, uh, the 2021. Yeah, um, uh, I've seen Eddie on the Monsters of Rock uh, cruise, of course. Uh, we had a little chat. Um, I should talk to him. Um, I suppose. Well, I just want to say I beat you, Eddie. (laughs) (laughs) You did. (laughs) Hey, man, I don't want to keep you much longer. You've been gracious with your time. Um, We all know the opposite of unsubscribe is for the bastards to subscribe, right? Those bastards should subscribe. It's very very important, and uh, you're one of those people who keep the rock flag flying, and that's really important because, you know, that's what, what I'm doing. That's what I've been doing all my life, especially in Ridiculous times like this, when uh, when when DJs are rock, uh, call themselves rock stars, and all, they, yeah. all they, in my opinion, what they do is they put like a stick into a computer and they wave their hands and they go, yeah, you know, and people are popping pills and and they fly from the in, in their little private jets from one show to another. And yeah, they go. Um, foo, I said, foo, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. What is that? Is right? driving a car? It is. You know. Well. That usually sounds better in my ears, you know, driving a car than what I hear in those. Uh, yeah, because you can cr- you can crank up uh, Burning Heart and Sin and light it up. Yeah, I love listening to rock in the ra- in, in in the car, man. It's perfect perfect space, and you perfect. you feel the 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 the, 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 the uh, what do you call it the, the vibrations from the from the low. The yeah. low notes, you know, the bass. Oh, 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 the bass okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like being in the in the live show, you know. I love it. Awesome. Hey, thanks again, Adrian. Um, My pleasure. And uh, we'll see you soon in North America. Yes, man. I, 
I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I really hope uh, to, to, that we get a chance to uh, to hit Canada. There's a lot of Dutch people living in Canada, as if yeah. you you probably know. Yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of Dutch names. Uh, I got some some relatives who actually uh, you know started farming in um, in Canada in right after the Second World War, and they're doing great. They're having a lot of fun, and um, I can't wait to be back. All right, man. Thanks. Great, Ernest. Thank you.